Hello and welcome to another wedding day behind the scenes video. Very excited about this one. Today we have a micro wedding. So I will take you through um, with my GoPro as usual. Um, again, apologies for the quality of the footage. It's very old. Um, like I said last time, on my list of things to upgrade. I've got lots of weddings on at the moment, so I uh, haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, but yeah, I'll take you through on top of my GoPro. You can see what we do. Uh, this is about two hours coverage today, so it's really small. So we're gonna pack a lot in um, and I will take you with me. Good morning and welcome to another wedding day. If you can hear um, weird things in the background. There's a young person. Say hello. <laughs> so I'm just making his bottle just now and then I'm gonna drop him off at my mother-in-law's before we go. And this is a bit of an unusual wedding today. It's a, another micro wedding and it's a early morning one as well. So the ceremony is actually at 10 a.m. and it goes to about uh, midday. And we're gonna have some photos after the ceremony and then we're gonna go to this really gorgeous little kind of cafe restaurant called Kaya next door uh, for a snack and then they're gonna go off afterwards. But yeah, we're keeping our fingers crossed that they're gonna be happy with us uh, photographing inside. I have tried to ask them, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, wish me luck. Um, we're off. Gonna just drop Arthur off at um, my mother-in-law's, which she will be very, very happy about. And then we'll go off to the wedding. It's um, at Horsham Registry Office again, so, literally only down the road from me. I've done a few weddings here now, so I'm pretty um, pretty confident with how everything's gonna go. Um, it's always nice when you've been at a venue a few times, because when you get brides that aren't from the area as well, you can kind of advise them on how everything goes, um, which is always very, very appreciated on their part. Um, so they say anyway. <laughs> so I vastly underestimated uh, how cold it is <laughs> today. Um, luckily I do run a bit warm though, so um, I imagine literally in half an hour I'm going to be complaining that it's too hot. Um, but there's no, even though there's a flood warning, there is actually no rain scheduled today. So I am keeping my fingers crossed for the couple's sake that that is the case. I have brought my umbrella with me though. I make sure I bring it to every single wedding. It's a big dome see-through umbrella. So it looks really, really cool um, when you're doing photos with it. I've done pretty much every wedding I've done this summer actually has had uh, rain. So it's come in useful quite a few times. It's already paid for itself. Um, it only cost 20 quid. I'll, I'll link it in the description actually, it's brilliant. They didn't let me leave a review for some reason. Apparently I'm not allowed to put my pictures on. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion, why not, why not? But yeah, they uh, caught wind of that. But it was an honest review. I did, you know, I, I did go into about how good it was um, in detail and all this kind of thing. But hey, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I've got that in the back uh, and hopefully we won't need it, but it's good to have it. So the ceremony starts at uh, 10 a.m. So I'm gonna make sure I get there. I'm dropping Arthur off at nine, uh, just before nine. And I'm gonna make sure I get there at about five past, 10 past nine. I always get there super early. I like to get there at least an hour early usually. Um, if I can, just so I can, well, obviously it doesn't really count this time because I've done this venue millions of times, but even though I've done this venue lots, I still like to go really early because you never know. You never know what, if anything's changed or, you know, last night they could have had a flood and they could have moved to a different room, you know, it, the lighting's always different. So it's always good to pop a few test shots as well. Um, and also the groom's always there early as well. So you can uh, get some photos. If you don't obviously have a second photographer like I don't today, you can get some nice photos of the groom uh, while they're waiting because obviously, you know, the bride is the main focus on a micro wedding when you only have one photographer. Um, well, that's usually the case anyway. It's usually what the couples go for. So that's what I will be doing. So now let's cut to the GoPro footage. That was a close one. <laughs> that's my zealous driving there. So this is the aforementioned umbrella. It's pretty cool. Oh, we've got the Prosecco there as well. So in my kit bag today, we have the Koiro dual camera harness. 
very useful so as I have two camera bodies. I've got my Nikon Z6 II with the 24-70 f4 on there. Currently waiting to upgrade to the 2.8 which will be very exciting. And then we've got my D600 with the 50mm 1.4 on there as well. I then have two speed lights, both Nikon. One of them is going to go on the Nikon uh, D600 and then my GoPro is going to go on top of the Z6. And then obviously I've got lots of batteries. I also carry this little credit card wallet on me. It just clips onto the belt hoop on my trousers that I wear and it's so useful. I can carry my uh, business cards in there, also any debit cards if I don't have pockets and also any notes I need for the day such as timings and numbers. So onto the coverage. As mentioned before, I like to get to my venues an hour early, regardless of whether I've been there before or not for many reasons, apart from saving myself from the extra stress such as unforeseen traffic, car or childcare issues. It also means I can check in with any registrars, vicars, coordinators, etc. to make sure we are all on the same page, as well as taking the time to get those establishing shots as well of the venue, as well as any extra details as well inside the ceremony room before it fills up with people later. So here I'm just getting those venue shots from every angle, I'll also be going around the back to the gardens as well in a minute just to get those shots too before everyone arrives. This is the back of Kaya, the restaurant I mentioned that we're going to after the ceremony. So I'll make sure to get that shot as well as later when everyone's there. So these are the gardens in which we'll be taking the family formals and couple photos later. I photographed here a lot, so I do know what spots I like but the flowers and foliage do change quite rapidly so I like to walk around and see if anything's changed recently so then I know where I want to place everyone with the photos later. So by this point um, the groom should be arriving soon so I'll make my way back round to the front to wait for him. That's another reason I like to be early as well. I also want to be there for the groom so I can help them out with anything they need when they arrive. Especially if they're arriving on their own, it's nice to be greeted with a familiar friendly face. In this instance today, the groom had never actually visited the venue before, so I made sure I was there to greet him and take him to where he needed to be, which I'm assuming probably saved him some stress. I do have a deep set philosophy when it comes to my job. Um, I'm not just here to just take photos, I'm also your friend as well. I'm here to make sure everything runs smoothly and to advocate for you and stand in your corner if anything doesn't go to plan. I honestly truly believe that to get the best photos possible you do need that connection with your photographer and to feel like I'm your friend as well as your photographer. Um, so it's one of the main reasons I actually insist on meeting all my couples before the day, just so we can get to know each other. So when we do arrive there's no awkwardness and you know me already and it just makes everything a lot nicer and smoother. So I popped outside to wait for the bride to arrive here. Uh, when I meet my couples beforehand, I make sure to go over their timeline so I know exactly when everything is going to happen so I can be in the right place at the right time. Then I get shots of her getting out of the car and entering the venue. Always make sure to compliment your brides and grooms, obviously, when you see them for the first time, of course. Get those smiles coming. Then I ask if there's anything they need before going in, um, etc. as now is the time to do so, obviously, before the ceremony starts. Then the bride goes into the adjacent room for the interrogation <laughs> with the registrar. Uh, for those who don't know or don't live in the UK, it's literally a five minute conversation so you can confirm you are there willingly and legally etc. Um, it's a private legality so I can't be in the room for that so I head back into the ceremony space at that point to wait. While I wait, I take any extra detail shots I can um, if I see the opportunity and I get shots of the family all greeting each other as well. 
Now here she comes. Her dress is awesome, uh, very different and I love it. It's from Selkie, I think it's called the Sweet Corn Puff Dress. Um, I'll link it below. Uh, she's also wearing Adidas shoes as well instead of heels, which is really awesome. Uh, even though I photographed at this venue before, this is actually the first time I photographed a wedding small enough that we can host the ceremony in this red room. It's called the Chairman Room and it's so amazing in here. It's so characterful and the lighting's fantastic as well, uh, which is really helpful. As far as registry offices go, uh, you can't really get better than this in my opinion. I apologise for the weird angle by the way, I must have knocked my GoPro at some point whilst I was walking and um, you're getting a very fantastic view of the floor though I must say. <laughs> So I had to stay in this corner for pretty much the entire ceremony, which is um, it's really limited how many shots I could get, but it's a tiny room, so not much room to manoeuvre anyway. Um, when I got there, obviously I double checked with the registrar where I needed to stand, etc., because they usually um, are quite specific in that regard when there's uh, no space. It's also the same reason I didn't use flash during this ceremony. Obviously everyone said they were happy for me to do what I needed to do, but I do find flash to be super obnoxious uh, in such a small space with a small party. So I keep it to an absolute minimum if I can. Uh, luckily the light was perfect, so it wasn't really a problem at all today anyway. Now they are man and wife. I did a burst of photos here. I made a fun gif out of it for them. Um, I'll put it on the screen now. Something a bit different, uh, I think it's quite fun. So once they were married and sat down to sign the register, I had a bit more freedom of movement now, uh, which was great. I made sure to do some family photos inside as well as the ones outside for a bit of variety as well. I know the couple love this room, so I wanted to get as many shots as possible in here for them. Do double check with the registrar before doing this though. Uh, they do run quite a tight ship. I think there's six weddings going on here today. So I did make sure to check that we had time first before doing all these, but luckily they were really um, good with us. So once all that was done, I ran out so I could capture their exit. Whilst the family was gathered up there, I took the opportunity to get them all together for a few group shots too. Uh, in our pre-wedding meeting, the bride mentioned that she wanted the venue to be featured in some of the shots, so this was a great way for achieving that. Um, I always get the standard group shots and then some of them cheering as well to get them all hyped up. So this was super cute, her friend showed up to see them coming out, um, obviously with micro weddings uh, not everyone can attend for obvious reasons, uh, so sometimes this does happen um, and it's often a really emotional beautiful moment, so I make sure to capture it without direction, I just kind of stand by the side and just let it happen, and this, uh, this turned out really lovely. Then we move straight into the couple photos. Uh, Liv's love seat was new actually, so we got some shots here first, just like I was saying. I've uh, photographed here many times, but there's always something new, hence why you get there early. Then I wanted to get some natural ring shots, um, and I really confused them with my directions here. I had a bit of a uh, brain blank as you do, um, but we got the shot in the end. I also got some from this angle too. I tried to move everyone out of the background as much as I could throughout the session, 
but I don't want to be a buzzkill and constantly demand that everyone move every few minutes. So in these ones I simply edit out, edited out everyone from the background. Uh, if you want to see how I did this, I actually have a speed editing video um, that I'll link above as well if you want to have a look at that. Then I've got the usual walking shorts, um, a good time to show off those Adidas shoes. Um, someone please tell me if I'm pronouncing that right by the way. Um, I've always pronounced it Adidas but I do hear other people say Adidas and I don't know if that's just an American way of pronouncing it or whatnot but yeah. Do tell me if I'm uh, saying it wrong. I used to pronounce Adobe Adobe for like 10 years of my life. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling this might be a similar situation. So I started taking photos here, but the light wasn't really doing it for me. So I turned them around and these were much more to my liking. Uh, we started off with the traditional poses first, such as kissing, foreheads together, head resting on chest then the standard side by side for the front and the back of the dress as well. We had quite a giggle doing these which um, made some great shots on their own too. Uh, I actually find that some of my favourite photos end up being when the couple can't get the pose quite right and we all end up having a bit of a giggle about it. There's a lot more energy and candidness to them as well which I love when that happens. Then some more walking shots to and from the camera. Then I took them to this arch, which is brilliant for creating silhouetted shots as well um, as some more arty ones looking through the leaves, etc. Here I am sneaking through the leaves, doesn't look dodgy at all. <laughs> then even more walking. Walking shots are so simple but so effective. Uh, you get such an energy from them and they always look incredible in black and white too. Uh, so I make sure to do it at every wedding I do. It also helps the couple loosen up a bit as well if they're feeling a little bit awkward. Not everyone wants to do an engagement shoot beforehand, so when it comes to the wedding they do tend to be a little bit stiff at first, so this is a really good way to loosen them up and get them all natural in front of the camera. And then we finally did some more pose stuff, a little bit less traditional here. I prefer my bride to hug from behind instead of the groom doing that. I find if the groom is behind the bride, it makes it look like a prom photo, whereas this way it looks a little bit more adult. It's also an opportunity to get some great arty close-ups as well of the bride. I adore how these came out. I think this is one of my favourite photos from the entire day, actually. Then I chose my spot and started doing the family formals. Uh, at the pre-wedding meeting, I make sure I get a shot list from all my couples so I don't miss anything important. That's literally the first thing I ask them, if there's any particular combinations of family they want, other than the traditional ones. And also if there's, more importantly, if there's anyone that can't be photographed together. So for example, any uh, tricky divorces or anything like that. You don't want to be awkward on the day um, asking people to get in a photo and then not want to, uh, so make sure you get all of that information in advance. This was pretty simple though, I mean it's a micro wedding so there wasn't much direction to go on so I had the list in my head which was nice and easy. So once all the photos were done, here we made our way over to Kaya, the restaurant. Unfortunately there were too many of us uh, to sit inside. Um, the inside is incredibly beautiful, it's like a jazz bar almost, it's really cool. Uh, but the outside is fantastic too, very rustic, uh, so I managed to get some great shots here as well. I got the main group shots of them first before they ordered just so they could enjoy their food and drink later without me disturbing them too much. 
I also made sure to get lots of candid shots of everyone here as well before they started eating because no one wants photos of themselves uh, with their mouths full, let's be honest. <laughs> um, so yeah, before the chewing started, I got as many shots as I could. I also uh, started creeping through the leaves as well. Um, I think a few people were walking past um, and didn't quite realise what was going on at first. Um, so it did look a bit strange to me kind of uh, like spying on them through the leaves, but the photos came out really well, I think, so it was worth it. <laughs> They very kindly offered for me to sit and join them uh, for a coffee and a bacon sandwich too, which was an unexpected pleasure. Uh, I love that about micro weddings. They are so much more relaxed um, and you're made to feel part of the family as well as it's such a small group, which is really nice. It's a real privilege to be included in these sorts of weddings um, and I absolutely love them. You always end up going home on a bit of a high after. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice experience all around. So I made sure to also get some more establishing venue shots too, with them featured in the center. I find the venues also appreciate this if you end up sending them some photos after the wedding as well. Uh, that goes for all vendors actually. Make sure you do make those contacts, get people's business cards, write down suppliers names, ask the bride afterwards if necessary. And if you can send them photos, if you took any of them or their services, it's always so appreciated and they will pretty much always tag you in them on social media too, which helps you out in return, obviously. If you don't send them photos, at least tag them in yours when you post on social media. Community is so important in this job and it does pay to be a good, decent human being anyway at the end of the day. So always make sure you do that and everyone will return the favor. Whilst everyone was eating, I asked to borrow their rings and do some creative ring shots. I don't care how careful you are, uh, never put them in a place where they could potentially get lost, like on wooden decking or near a grate or drain, etc. It's just not worth it, it's a big responsibility, so make sure they are very secure in a place where they couldn't possibly get lost um, if there was a sudden gust of wind or someone moved something, etc. And make sure you stay in view as well. Um, obviously, most rings are very expensive, so um, there's a quite an element of trust that goes into this. So you don't want to kind of disappear around the corner. Uh, you want to make sure you're in eye shot at all times. Um, obviously, the relationship you've built with them helps here as well. Um, again, going back to the fact that I do a pre-wedding consult, something like this is very important for something like this. Uh, you get that element of trust. Otherwise, if you if you don't have that relationship with the client, if you ask them to borrow their rings, they might say no, because uh, they don't have that relationship with you. But if you've already got that relationship established, they'll go, oh yeah, sure, take them, yeah. And it gives you a bit more creative freedom that way as well. So that's where we wrapped it up. Uh, they needed to head off to their afternoon tea reception and that's where my coverage ended anyway. Like I said, it's just a two hour micro wedding coverage. In conclusion, I loved this wedding. It was so much fun and there was a super relaxed vibe the whole time. I honestly didn't feel like I was working to be honest. Um, I had a great time and the couple and their family was so lovely, warm and friendly to me as well. So here are a few of my favourite images from the day. A massive thank you to my couple for letting me create this behind the scenes video. And thank you to anyone watching as well. If you like this video, do go and give it a like to help the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing as well for more videos like this and other photography related content as well. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>